we're joined now uh, by the head coach of the Louisville Cardinals, Charlie Strong. The Cardinals, uh, the defending Big East champions, if you will. There were four teams, of course, that won a, a slice of the Big East pie a year ago, but Louisville was the team that got the uh, BCS bid in a tremendous Sugar Bowl win uh, over um, uh, the Florida. Gators and, and coach, I know with an 11 and 2 record, piece of a championship as well behind you, there's really only one place to go when you're up at the top right there. So it's up to you uh, to kind of oversee the program and make sure that doesn't happen. How do you go about that? Well, it's all about managing expectations, and uh, right now has it been some real, it's been some unrealistic ex expectations placed on our program, but and it's complacency, and, and I always say to our team. Going to be that team that can continue to stay focused and each and every week go get better. You know, either you're growing or you're dying. We'll be a team that can grow or we'll be a team that dies and just want to maintain and get self absorbed and become cocky. Well, and you, I mean, you've got uh, some, some great building blocks uh, already in place down there with, uh, with your quarterback, uh, Bridgewater, coming back, a you know, tremendous athlete and can make some, uh, some exciting things happen. Too. And you've got you involved and, and will not allow uh, average, mediocre complacency, I'm sure, settling into uh, to campus there at Louisville. How, again, how, I know that you, you, you speak of it, but how do you instill that? Um, you're still a, a relatively young team that's experienced an awful lot of success here of late. How do you get them thinking we can get better? Well, I, I just tell them that each year that we've grown and we've gotten better and better and better. You know, I think about here, we're going into the fourth season now. Two years ago, in our first year, we were picked last. This, the season after that, we were picked last. And then last year, we picked to win it. This year, we picked to win it. So we never been, were picked in the middle. He's the first or last. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, we have some outstanding players, and Teddy's surrounded by some outstanding players. But, you know, the question mark, you've had a center, and Mario, who's been a four-year starter for us, our best offensive of lineman. Upper is graduated, but you know, look at it defensively. We didn't play well on defense, but you lose one starter on defense. We had to get better in the kicking game, but we just had to get better overall as a team. 19 <coughs> starters back. I guess you can understand why fans might be a little excited about the Cardinals, especially winning 11 games, winning a BCS game, being preseason pick number one in the league. Um, you'd rather be picked high than low, wouldn't you? Well, I'd rather be picked high than low without a doubt, but a lot of times when I'm low, at least I can sneak up on someone. <laughs> now I can't. No, you know, there's no sneak up on it now. Everybody's going to be waiting on me. Right. But, but it's the challenge within within our program. And, but you, you have to feel good that the, the progress that your program has made in, the, in these uh, the last four years coming up through your four season, just how far the program has, has come. What the, the, the shift now to a new conference, and I know, uh, I know Louisville's been through it before with Conference USA and, and to Big East. You know, there's a point in time where, where, where things settle down. You get three or four years worth of a, a, of a conference schedule. You anticipate, you know uh, what kind of offense and defense to prepare for on particular teams and individual teams. What's the challenge of this transition for you in Louisville? Well, the, the biggest challenge is, is what you just said, is, is just knowing the teams that you're going to go play. But at least UConn is still in the conference. At least Rutgers is, is still sitting there. South Florida is still sitting there. Now you have Central Florida. You have Memphis, who we played a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So we've been and we're familiar with Memphis. But uh, SMU, we, we've never played SMU. So you're, you're in there with, with some teams that you've never played before, but the teams that you, you with the Cincinnati's, with the Yukons, with the Rutgers, at least we have familiarity with those teams that we played them before. Well, you know, <laughs> clearly, uh, focus has got to be, I guess, a, a real key overall, not only because you're at the top of the heat now and teams are going to be taking a shot at you, but focus on what you have this year before you have to worry about what the University of Louisville will be going through starting next year. Once again, so because you have that focus now, and, and at least you hope that you have that focus, and you have a, a program that's going to get the national publicity, you also have a program that uh, has a potential Heisman Trophy candidate as well. So you're going to get 
the natural glare, the big spotlight, just what, you know, I'm sure you want it, what the kids want, what the fans want, it's going to be close to square land in Louisville, Kentucky. Let's start with Teddy Bridgewater, because, you know, here's a guy that, you know, came through for you. In fact, in the de facto championship game, which we broadcast a year ago, uh, playing hurt, came in, pitched your team to a, to a win coming from behind. It was an amazing performance. So how does Teddy do on Well, he's an amazing player. Yeah. And you, you talk about that performance against Rutgers and you know I, we go through that week and on Tuesday he said coach there's no way I can play you know he couldn't walk or throw the ball and then I'm looking at my trainers let's, let's get him to the game so then we get to the game and he walks up during the game and warm up and I walk over to him and say what do you think he said I can't go I, I just can't do it I said well, okay I said look here I said just wait just calm down because I knew once the atmosphere that Because that was a big time night that night. That, you're gonna get, you the, adrenaline get the adrenaline flowing, right? and adrenaline just start flowing. And he's a competitor, and just knowing who he is, that he was gonna play that night. So he grabbed me in the middle, middle of the first quarter. He says, "Coach, I'm ready to go." I said, "No, you said you can't play." He said, "Coach, I'm ready to go." So, <laughs> so then I looked at our offensive coordinator. I got him on the headset. I said, "Listen, second quarter, let's put him in. Let's just see what he does." And, and he goes in there and just with the one on one leg, and he just throws the ball. And I just the offense line, protect him. Don't let him get sacked. Just you know, Teddy, get rid of it. Don't just go down. So late in the game, I tell you this, we're late in the game. So we're driving to tie the game. We go, we're driving. So my man comes over. It's a timeout. So he comes over to me and says, hey, coach, they're not respecting me. Let's run a bootleg. I said, okay, <laughs> really? Really? Okay, I could just see me saying, run a bootleg. He gets hurt. Everybody's looking at me like, what is what he doing? doing? <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, no, that's not happening. I said, hey, Teddy, listen, we're going to put the ball in the middle. We're going to kick the field. Go, we're going to get out of here, okay? Listen, I don't need to see Teddy Bridgewater go run a bootleg, okay, <laughs> on a one level, one arm a leg. But but he's he's an amazing young man, and he, he's very humble, and and he and it's just you just like him just overall not only just his athletic ability just but just as a person he's a special young man well he clearly has a unique set of uh, talents as well the ability to run as well as throw the football uh the guys that he has to go through i mean you know with nine starters back on that sort of seven starters Back on that side of the ball, I should say. There are going to be a lot of guys that he can actually go after. you got Sonoris Perry, I know, who is uh, coming back after a year of being out with an ACL. Uh, you've got a couple of guys back on the offensive line. So how does it look in terms of feeling like it's a unit again right now? And does is Teddy the glue that makes that unit stick together? He is a glue, but if you look at it, uh, offensive line, we're going to have questions because, like I said, <clears throat> you lose. Mario and you lose Cupper. And so now you're looking at Jamon Brown's been a starter, Jake's been a starter, Jory at some point has started Miller. Now we gotta find a left tackle. The running back position is kind of question mark because you're looking at Sonoris with a knee and you're looking at Dominique Brown with a knee. So you have our two top running backs with a knee. But the wide receiver position, we're, we're really strong there with Devontae Parker, with Copeland, with Eli Rogers, and now you're gonna add a James Quick, you're going to add a Robert Clark, you're going to add a Milton, but we, we have some receivers that can get down the field. But it, it's all, And then a tight end position as strong as we've ever been. B.J. Butler, Jalen Harrington, Hubble, and then you add a Gerald Christian in that mix. So we're, we're, we're very fortunate that we're building depth, but the quarterback position, and, and you know I hope nothing happens to my guy, but we, the backup position is going to be critical for us to go develop a backup quarterback too. The running back position you mentioned both uh, with with knee problems and there, either of them compete in the spring uh, to let you know it as Snorris Perry had been uh, injured the the previous fall I'm thinking he, he probably showed up a little, a little bit in the spring to get to uh, get it loosened up. Well hey, we, we did not allow Snorris to go through spring ball at all but but Dominique did and Dominique ran very well during spring practice but what Snorris is you know he heard that in, in uh, November so he's not weeks into it so now it's just a matter of him taking a hit yeah you know he can jump he can cut he can do it but it's a matter of, you know because you don't ever feel good about it until you take that lick on it and then you start feeling good about it coach 
Well, you mentioned also the fact that you've got an 11 starters back or 12 players, I guess, with starting experience back on the defensive side of the ball. So as much as we're talking about a potential Heisman candidate and seven starters back and an offense that, uh, you know, helped get you a, a Big East championship, but you were a this defense was 23rd national in total yards allowed a year ago. So there's also a lot of optimism, I would think, on the other side of the ball. It is. And what happened on defense for us this year is that we were so inconsistent and, and we just didn't play well each and every game. Because you look at the Florida game and you're like, why didn't they play like that all season long? And, you know, we gave up big plays. Didn't get off the field. Third down is so critical. And we didn't get off the field on third down. But we do return to you know, you look at the middle of that defense, and you, and you got Preston Brown, who's a returner there, and then you're free safety and Calvin Pryor with a Keen Smith as your other safety. So you feel like down the middle, you're pretty solid. That's where you like to be. But we, we still, you know, we, we have to make more plays, and we have to get off the field. <clears throat> You're good. I'm good. I'm just. Uh, I'm just. Can't wait to watch Louisville uh, play football again. We we covered them two or three times last year, and just. Great football, good, exciting stuff, and 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 the thing that impresses me, coach, is is the discipline uh, that the kids show on the field. Uh, you know, they they don't do silly things, they don't do stupid things, and and uh, that that game against Rutgers uh, really showed, uh, I think, uh, you your your leadership sprinkling uh, in there too. So congratulations for a great season, but guess what? Doesn't matter anymore, does it? It doesn't matter anymore. Put it away. You know they forgot about yesterday. They worry about tomorrow, right? So let's just move on and let's get ready to go play this thing. All right. Starts a month from tomorrow against Ohio University. Coach, best of luck. Congratulations on everything thus far and best of luck this year. All right. Thank you. And Charlie Strong. Good to see you.